Flash Drive presents. Oh, got to get ready. Laptop. Plant. That looks nice there. Ooh, cookies. Yum. Notebook. Microphone. Webcam. And coffee, of course. A video podcast where deaf, hard of hearing, and disabled creatives and their allies chat about experiences, best practice, and the future of the arts. The Green Room. Ramps on the Moon. Take over. Hello, folks, and welcome to another edition of The Green Room. Um, This series of The Green Room is a Ramps on the Moon takeover, uh, and we will be doing five episodes, and each episode will be looking at the making of the Ramps on the Moon and Leeds Playhouse uh, recent production of Oliver Twist. Um, Oliver Twist is a completely accessible um, production which combines audio description, and BSL and captions. Um, And so each of these episodes on the green room, we're gonna be looking at one element of that um, creation process. Um, So welcome, thank you for joining us today. Today we are looking at um, working with learning disabled actors. And I'm joined today with the lovely Kirsty Pennycook, who is a creative enabler and Rebecca Hill, who um, played Luna in the production of Oliver Twist, and we're going to be having a lovely chat. I'm your host for today. My name is Claire Louise English, and I was lucky enough to play Nancy alongside Rebecca in the show. So we're going to kick off today um, with some audio descriptions of ourselves, uh, and then we'll get going. So as I say, my name is Claire Louise English, Um, and I am a white woman with red hair. I've got my intelligent glasses on my head at the moment, really helpful. I've got big gold earrings, hoops in, uh, and I'm wearing a denim uh, blouse because I love denim, I'm always wearing denim, and you find me in my lounge today. My sign name is this, which is uh, as if you've got a big red clown nose on and you're kind of like twisting it with your hat. Um, So that's me. And BSL interpreting for me today, I have Amy and I'm gonna hand over to Amy to do her own audio description. Hello, my name is Amy Cheskin. My sign name is Amy. That's like with jazz five hands and it comes down from the breastbone and falls down. I'm a white female. I have brown hair that's currently in a plait to one side. I can never remember if that's left or right. I am also mirroring uh, Claire today with a denim shirt. And I have a lovely, very attractive green background. Thank you, Amy. Um, And so also in the room with me is Kirsty Pennycook. Would you like to say hello and would you describe yourself? Hello, I'm Kirsty Pennycook and I am a white woman with brown hair and blue eyes. Got my glasses on today. I'm wearing a peach jumper. Uh, I'm in my room at my desk with a big painting behind me uh, of the seaside. Uh, and my BSL interpreter for today is Vicky, so I'll hand over to her. Hello, my name's Vicky. Sign name is Vicky, like you're chewing your fingernails, um, which I've done ever since I was little. I'm wearing a black top. I have light brown hair below the shoulders and glasses, and I've got a blue background for me today. Thank you, Vicky. Uh, Also in the room today, we have the marvellous Rebecca Hill. Would you like to say hello, Rebecca, and or do you describe yourself? Hello, I'm Rebecca. Um, I've got brown hair and brown highlights. And um, I'm in my room. I've got pale right wood up behind me. Perfect, thank you. And would you like to introduce your or do your uh, BSL interpreter? Oh yes, Dave. Um, welcome to Dave. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, my name is Dave 
Richley, I'm a BSL interpreter, um, white man with short grey hair and a stubbly grey beard. I've got a light green screen behind me and I'm wearing a grey t-shirt and my sign name refers to holding a ponytail at the back of your head. It's not there but that's the sign name. <laughs> Oh, that reminds me, Rebecca, would you like to show us your sign name? I forgot, again. <laughs> so did I. Um, my, la oh. my sign name is Rebecca Dancing. Fab, thank you. And what was your name? Dark Horse Jumper. Thank you. And my sign name is, I forgot too, it's like you're flicking a penny with, from your thumb up into the air and catching it again, Kirsty. Oh, I forgot to swipe here. Right. <laughs> Brilliant. Thanks, everyone. So we are all met. We're all here. So let's, um, let's chat. Let's talk about Oliver Twist. Oh, so it's yeah. funny that you... It's funny that you mentioned Dark Horse, Rebecca, because I was going to ask you... Before Oliver Twist, you'd worked quite a lot with Dark Horse, haven't you? How how's that been for you? Good. Everything was really good. And now in the middle of rehearsals, getting more ideas for next year for what we're doing. And that's Rebecca. exciting. And have you worked with them a lot? What? Have you worked with them a lot before Oliver Twist? I did, yes, before Oliver Twist, yeah. So you've done a few different projects at Dark Horse, haven't you, Rebecca? And the, the show that you're working on right now um, is a show called Unit 21, is that right? Yes, Unit 21. That's next year performance. Fantastic. Is that a tour you're doing? Um, This one, we're doing, we're doing two. One is for the parents and carers and PAs. And next one is for the days, like going for tour and stuff. Fantastic. So sharing first and then going on tour afterwards. Yeah. That's brilliant. Very exciting. And can you remember how many years you've worked with them how, or how many productions you've done? Has there been, there's been quite a lot over the years, has there? Oh, um, putting you on the spot. Oh. I would say I was, was a little. <laughs> um, wow, okay. Yeah. So did you start off with them in, in, in like a youth theatre and then work right through with them? Yeah, that's what I did, yeah. Youth theatre first and then when I got older I worked with other actors, yeah. Brilliant, thank you. So, um, Kirsty. Can you describe to us, as, in sort of more general terms, the role of a creative enabler? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I've done this kind of job a few times before on different shows, uh, but this is the first time I've ever called it a creative enabler. Uh, and I really love the term because I think my main role is about facilitating and making sure that Rebecca's experience was as good as it could be on Oliver Twist. Uh, and that was through supporting Rebecca in rehearsals and out of rehearsals, whatever she needed um, to access the show and to be part of the rehearsal process. But also to work with the creative team and the actors and make sure that everyone was working in the best way possible to support um, Rebecca. And I guess in, in general terms, this role uh, is so different for everyone that you work with. Um, and I, I mainly see it as a way to make accessible something that wouldn't have been before so at a place like Dark Horse Rebecca you'll need to correct me if I'm wrong um, but there isn't creative enablers and there isn't PAs or support staff that support people one-on-one -on -one because everything in that space is set up to support learning disabled actors you all have learning disabilities and you all work together to create that show so there's loads of really trained and brilliant staff but there's not one-to-one -one support for everyone but when you come into a rehearsal process like Oliver Twist, which um, was a different, uh, it was a different thing that wasn't, everyone didn't have a learning disability, it wasn't set up that way. What was great was that we could work together one to one to make sure that we could do everything we needed to do on Oliver Twist. Does that, is that fair, Rebecca? Does that sound like what I did? 
Yeah, I do yeah. agree with you, Kirsty. Great, good news. <laughs> so, was it? Did it feel very different for you, Rebecca, coming from working with Dark Horse to working on Oliver Twist? How was how was it different in the rehearsal room? Um, at Dark Horse, I was working with the team. And then when I joined off it it's just me and meeting new people. That's totally different, I think. You met a lot of new people on Oliver Twist, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Yeah. And you'll have been working with the same people at Dark Horse for a really long time. Yeah. Um, and then to meet a whole new team of people. Yeah, very exciting. What was different about our show, Rebecca, than any show that you've ever done before? What was new for you? Ah, uh, um, working with Ben, like Arden Simpson. And add more signs as well, I think. There's some signs I don't know, so. Yeah, of course. So was that the first time that you'd worked with deaf actors, Rebecca? Yes, yes, on shows, yes. And audio description, that was very new for me as well. And that was Ben, who played Mr Bumble in the show. He's a blind actor and he was also in charge of our kind of audio description, wasn't he? And that... So was that the first time you'd um, worked with audio description as part of the show? Yes, as well, yeah. Yeah, me too. Go on, Kirsty, were you going to say something? Well, I was going to say, and um, the you, we were lucky that you had some sign language already, didn't you, Rebecca, from school? Um, but learning to sign your lines as well must have been new for you, was it? Yeah, that's new for me, yeah. I never did that before, so... Yeah, you did a marvellous job. So you, your character spoke and signed at the same time, didn't they? So that they could communicate with the deaf characters and also with the hearing characters. Fantastic. Well, and speaking from experience, I know that that is really hard to do, signing and speaking at the same time. Um, did Kirsty help you a lot with that, with learning those lines and... And how did Kirsty help you in rehearsals? How? Yeah, what, what kind of things did you do together? In <laughs> we do like voice work together and warm up just before dawn stays. Yeah. yeah. And did she help you to learn your lines and the signing and, and the blocking and things like that? Um, the first time I got script... Amy helped me before Kirsty, and then Kirsty helped after Amy from Dark Horse. Yeah, do you know what? That's a good point. If you don't mind, for, like to talk about actually, is that one thing about Oliver Twist that was unusual was that we met on the very first day of Oliver Twist, didn't we? Do you remember when we started working together? That was the first time we'd met. So you would had some support from Amy, who yeah. works at Dark Horse. She's your creative director at Dark Horse, isn't she? Um, to support you with the lead up to rehearsals, um, which is a really important thing, I think, that uh, in Yorkshire we're so lucky that there's learning disabled theatre companies that have got companies of learning disabled actors that are working all the time. So there's Dark Horse Theatre Company and Mind the Gap Theatre Company who all have an in-house acting team that are supported by um, creatives that are based there all the time. So we were lucky that actually you had some support before me and then also then when I came in, we worked together, didn't we, to do some script work and working out our blocking and thinking about notes and how we rehearse them together. Do you remember all the times we would go away to, we had a little room, didn't we, where we could go and we could think about all the things that we'd done that day and make sure we knew them all and we could move on to the next day. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Um, I've forgotten what I was going to ask you based on that, actually, now. It's gone right out of my head. Um, yes, that's what I was going to ask you. So, Rebecca, you didn't know Kirsty before you started rehearsals, is that right? Yeah, that's right, yeah. So how was that? Is that, um, is that a scary thing? Is that an exciting thing to, to come into rehearsals and, and know that you're going to be working really closely with someone that you've not met before? Um, that must be a really important kind of relationship that you have there. Yes, at first I was nervous and a bit worried because I didn't, I didn't know some people I don't know. So Yeah, I, f I felt like that as well, Rebecca, when we arrived on our first day, especially because the 
all of the everything was quite new to me so I'd never worked um with sign language in a sh- in a show this big before I'd never worked with audio description before so many new people to meet um we hadn't met yet and I knew we were going to have to work together really closely so I was like oh I hope we get on um but we had a really nice time I think when you're thinking about what everybody needs and what access everyone has you get really close really quickly don't you yeah do you th- yeah how do you feel now about the people that you met on that first day well, I feel happy to got friends got more friends <laughs> we did all yeah. make really close friendships didn't we yeah we did and it was a big cast wasn't it Rebecca was there what 13 of us in the cast I mean that's that's a lot of people on that first day Yes. And did you find that it was because um, just to explain to people that don't know, we we rehearsed Oliver Twist, didn't we? And then we we teched it and we opened the show and we got as far as press night. We had a few weeks in Leeds Playhouse and then we were just about to go off on tour and obviously COVID um, struck and uh, the show was closed and we all had to go home. And I have to say that was one of the saddest days ever. I don't know if you remember, Rebecca, us all sitting around sobbing because we wanted to carry on with the show and we had to go home. Yeah, I was crying as well. Wasn't it? Re- oh, emotion. And then we had a big break because of COVID. And then we came back and we re-rehearsed again for five weeks, I think it was. And then... Um, well, rehearsed and filmed it, didn't we? And so what was it like coming back the second time? Did you feel much more comfortable with the cast because we all kind of knew each other already? Yeah. Like comfort, like family, friends, yeah. Yeah, it was like family, actually. It really was. And I was going to say on that as well, when we came back the second time, Rebecca, I don't know how you felt, but I came back to the second time that we worked together and I was like, oh, we've got this. Me and Rebecca work really well together. <laughs> we know what's going to happen. Uh, we knew the script already because in our first rehearsals, right, things were changing all the time and we would learn a line and then we would have to relearn it and then the signs would change because it was a really exciting creative process where things could develop and change as we went through, which it should be. But that was a lot of hard work, wasn't it, for us to do? When we came back the second time round, we knew each other, we knew the script, we knew what was going to happen. And I felt like we whizzed through those first three weeks. We were like, whew, we've got this. Did you feel more confident the second time or the first time? What do you think? Um, probably both. Both. Good. Because we had to be you actors this time, didn't we? We, we did have to. Chris, Dan and Amy. Yeah. We knew people joining the team, didn't we? Which is a nice thing. It adds like a new a new element to think about in rehearsals, doesn't it? So, Chris, I do remember what I said. I said, I love meeting new people. You did. You absolutely did say that. <laughs> um, and we met a lot of them. And it can be nerve-wracking at first, can't it? But then I think we've all learned so much from each other from working together. And I think, I'm sure other people wouldn't mind me saying, everybody learned a lot working with you too, Rebecca. Which is a great thing. <laughs> oh, I thought we'd I thought you'd frozen for a minute there, Rebecca. Yeah, I'm still here. <laughs> still here. Oh good, good. <laughs> and so Rebecca, the way that it, that things changed all the time in rehearsal, um, is that very different to how you used to work with Dark Horse? How were things were things structured differently with Dark Horse? Did you have a script and you stick to it? Or were they devised in a similar way to, to Oliver? Um, well, you perform it's doing now, we, we have no script in this one. We, we just make it up. We do. Okay, so it's kind of improvised and being devised. Yeah, yes. Great. And then for other shows, you, you learn scripts, right? So you would have a full script that you would learn in advance. Is that right? I did, yeah, for Snake Bite, yeah. I did. And how was it for you with, with Oliver Twist, with the constant um, changing of lines and new things coming in and the signing as well? Um, I got used to that because I do a lot of dark cast, so, yeah. Yeah, that's good. And it was good to have Bryony in the room, wasn't it? Bryony was the writer. And she was very open to all our 
changes that we were making and changes that Amy, the director, was making. It was a really interesting process for me in terms of that as well, because um, I see so much of my role as like uh, making things really clear and making sure that everybody knows exactly what's happening all the time. And actually there were moments in rehearsals where nobody knew what was happening all the time. So a big thing for me was like, I had to learn that sometimes that was okay um, for Rebecca to be in the same boat as everyone else, which is like a little bit unclear right now. We don't know what's happening. Um, and for me to be unclear too. Uh, but then also find the times to be to sort of have chats with people and go, oh, I think we need it to be more clear today, actually, so that we get we can do our best um, work. So it was a bit of a balancing act for me. I'd never worked on a show in this way that was devised as a support, like as someone who was supporting. So um, it was a whole, yeah, you know, it was a new kettle of fish for me. But I think the fact that we all got to have our own stamp on what that first show was was so important. And a big thing about working. Um, with you Rebecca which I don't know if I don't correct me if I'm wrong it could be wrong um I thought it was so great that our lines could adapt and change to what it is that that you wanted to say but you know how sometimes your lines stayed the same but sometimes we changed them sometimes we added sign sometimes we took words away sometimes we changed the wording and I think that added so much to your characters that actually they had your voice so that it came across really clearly as you is that true can I say that? <laughs> <laughs> do you agree, Rebecca? I do agree, Kirsty. You're good. Good. Well, that's good. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I was going to say, um, Kirsty, there must be a certain ele element of your job which is working with Rebecca, and then a certain element that's working with everyone else. And there are times when you have to say, look, we need to be clear or we need to make a decision or... Um, and it must be just a completely ever, ever evolving role, I imagine. Yeah, I think it is. And I feel really lucky to have worked with a company that were ready to accept that, actually, because I think um, that quite often people can see a role like this as uh, that I would just work with Rebecca and I would make whatever was happening over here work for Rebecca over here. Um, mm -hmm. But actually, that's not how it felt on Oliver at all. It felt like everybody... Um, wanted to work together to do the best they could for everyone else um, and actually like as you know Rebecca you would rather have a note from our associate director or our director than a note from me my job is to facilitate around what you working with everyone else so um, yeah it was really great to have a team that were really up for uh, learning about how best to work together and what was necessary to work with Rebecca and with everyone else as well. We were all, we all did a lot of thinking about each other's access actually. So it wasn't just us thinking about that. Um, but to have a team that were really responsive, it's just so, yeah, makes the, makes the work really fun as well. I felt like yeah. the second time, sorry. sorry. I just felt like the second time around because we'd all got to know each other and we'd all learn about each other's access and how to run a room that worked for everybody in, in the rehearsals. The second time around just flew because we'd done all of that learning and we'd all got to know each other so well. Yeah. yeah, I think it was really interesting the way we were sort of set up right from the beginning that the that access was everybody's responsibility in the company and it was everybody's responsibility to make the access for the audience um, there and also for the access within the cast as well. And it, it became a kind of joint ensemble responsibility. Um, do you think... I mean, it sounds like you're going to, I, it sounds like you've already answered this question, but, but do you think that it's the people then that makes that, makes your job easier? It's the company around you and their kind of openness that makes the role of the creative enabler um, fit and, and easier? Yeah, absolutely. I think it is. It's about trusting the people around you to sort of make the changes that you think is possible. It's like, I mean, we've, we've talked a lot in rehearsals about the, um, the social model of disability mm -hmm. and how people are disabled by their environment and the people around them or the barriers around them uh, and it's exactly the same for this for our sort of relationship in, in the room it's it's uh, if there was ever something that was unclear I was like what am I what am I doing that is making that unclear and what can I do to support and to fix it and Rebecca does that a lot for other people as well and 
it, it absolutely is setting up something that works for us, isn't it? And going, that's how we work. And that, that is the only way that it will work. And mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it is definitely, it's a team effort to support each other for sure. Yeah, I think it's really important for people who um, are watching these and want to take things forward, take access forward into their work or to work with learning disabled actors I think it is all about knowing that there are the people there that can support you and that maybe you don't have to have the answers all the time that you can try things out and and yeah as I said get the support that you need get the experts in that can support you you don't have to like I was saying in one of the other um podcasts that we've done video podcasts we've done you know, you don't have to become an expert in BSL to inter to integrate BSL into your work, but you do need to get the experts in to help you to do that. Um, I'm not sure I, where I'm going with that conversation, with that question. No, I, I think it's a really, really interesting point. And actually, it was one thing that I would have, that I wanted to say at some point today, is that the, there are so many companies doing great work, like Dark Horse, where Rebecca goes, um, and like Mind the Gap Theatre Company in Bradford, uh, and also places like Leeds Playhouse that have a brilliant learning disability programme called Buzz. Um, and there is organisations that are doing this work already. And I think a great thing about Oliver Twist was that Amy Leach, our director, wanted to engage with that, with that work. It wasn't, let's find a learning disabled actor and cast them in Oliver Twist, which could have happened. It was, let's work with a company and audition actors from Dark Horse, from Mind the Gap, and find somebody that is supported already in our industry. Um, mm -hmm. Because there's not many learning disabled freelance actors. Freelance isn't a world that works for a lot of people. Um, but the fact, Rebecca, that you work at Dark Horse means that you get to do uh, Snake Bite, your production at Dark Horse, then you get to do Oliver Twist and have some time away from Dark Horse and then go back and you're already working on your next show, Unit 21. Is it nice to be that busy, Rebecca, and going from one project to the next project to the next project? Um, that's been, that's what, I've been, what I've been just been told to do, so I just, <laughs> what they do. <laughs> By Amy. Yeah. On to the next one, on to the next one. Yes. Yeah. Um, is that how you got involved, um, Rebecca, with Oliver Twist? Did they audition at Dark Horse and audition all the people in your company then? Is that how that worked? Um, no, I came to Lee's my house for audition. Okay. You, Amy and Hannah and Katie was there as well. And okay. was there others? Yeah, was there others from Dark Horse that came with you? Did you did you come together to do a workshop? Um, Joe did one, but he, he didn't go it, so I go it, so what happens with auditions yeah but it's great dog. and it is great that's what happens um though it's great that different people got an opportunity to audition for shows the same the last show that I did this similar role I was assistant director on um be my baby and and had a similar role in managing the learning disability access on that um uh, and we had a similar thing there was lots of people that auditioned from mind the gap um and then one actor got the part but it's still a brilliant thing for that organization that lots of actors have had an opportunity to audition because it doesn't happen as much as for other actors yeah. so it's great yeah so Rebecca let's now talk about your characters because we've not mentioned the, the two very contrasting and wonderful characters um, that you played in Oliver Twist obviously you played um, Luna alongside my Nancy so we were mates in the show and you also played Mrs Mad, didn't you so do you want to tell us about those two characters and how they were very different from each other okay um Mrs Mam mm -hmm. is like sweet angry not happy at either and for Luna she's quite quiet quite shy and at the end she to stand up, stands up to herself, to vaguing and feels like at the end. Yeah. yeah, she really does, doesn't she? She has quite a journey. She really um, finds her confidence at the end of the, the piece and she's quite crucial, really, isn't she? Because she gives the, some crucial bits of information to, to Bill. And those, no. those characters, it's so interesting to me that, that your descriptions of those characters are so perfect. 
and they're so different from each other, aren't they? Those two characters, they couldn't be more different. It takes a good actor, Rebecca, to play two very different characters. Um, I think what is so nice about that, watching it, is that you get to see an actor with a learning disability playing Mrs. Mann, who is not what you would expect at all, mm. uh, who is mean, who is cruel, who is horrible to mm. the deaf boy that comes into, the, into her care, Oliver, um, and vicious. She's a violent lady. Um, and that is not what you would expect to see. Um, and then we have Luna, who's a much sweeter, younger character, um, who is a bit vulnerable and is a bit more of what a learning disability actors play more often. Um, but she has this really strong and powerful streak and she changes the narrative and she's a really, really important character. So you're playing two really important characters. And I think there's something about that representation of, the, of you playing those parts that I think is really, really important. Like very clever casting choices as well. And you got to play your best strengths. I know that Amy, our director, has told me that um, in your audition, you did this brilliant thing, Rebecca, where you, um, you, you were playing a game, I think, and you commanded the room and everybody just did exactly what you said. And Amy went, oh, that's a Mrs. Man right there. <laughs> and he, he needs to play Mrs. Man because Amy hadn't, didn't have in her mind uh, what parts she was going to cast. She knew that she needed some different parts, but not everybody was cast yet. So it could have been that if you'd come in and been a, the perfect Charlie Bates, you might have got that part. Or if you'd been the perfect someone else, you might have got that. So it's really tailored to you and to what your strengths were, which I think is a really great thing. I wouldn't like to be on the wrong side of Mrs. Man. That's no, all. I was just going to say, I could really see you, Rebecca, commanding a room, <laughs> uh, having seen your, having been on the receiving end of, of Mrs. Man. Um, yeah. Was it fun to play a part that was so strong and, and powerful? I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and did you enjoy that you played su such different characters? Was that, was that a fun challenge? Yeah, it was fun. And someone told me, a little birdie, when we did the, uh, one of the other podcasts about design, um, the ladies from wardrobe were telling me that, that um, you went in quite early on into wardrobe so that you could see your lunar dress and before it was all made dirty and, and ripped. Because oh, yeah. it was that important to you for the character? Yes, it is important to see the character, yeah. Do you know? We, sorry. <laughs> Zoom. Do you know how how it helped you to to see those those costumes before? How it helped me. Oh, uh -huh. that's interesting. Um, when I was wearing them, I mean, this man, because I had a what's it called the puff, the puff. Yeah, like, like these. Like this, then it straight. <laughs> Yeah, the puffed shoulders. Hmm. Yeah, that got um that um got me more meaner. Mm. So, did you think that the costume kind of helped you to create the characters then? Yes, it did. Yeah. One thing that we chatted about was um, trying to find as many ways as possible to access the information that other people uh, would get from reading a script. Um, because Rebecca's very good at reading and taking in things and learning lines, um, but it's not the way that it's not the best way to get the most information out of what we are creating. So we tried loads of different things, didn't we? We um, we sort of rewrote the story, we wrote it out, we made diagrams and we color coded things. Um, but a big part of that was props and costume and us having access to the world of the play a little bit before. Um, and I loved, Rebecca, when you tried on that lunar dress and it was like beautiful. It's a beautiful blue dress, like pristine, like silk. It was like Sunday best, wasn't it? We talked about it being the Sunday best outfit. Um, and then it was destroyed. So we imagined it, it helped you create your backstory. Do you remember we talked about how Luna had come from a really loving home and then had uh, and then had become an orphan and been taken in by um, had been taken in by Fagan and the gang. And it really helped like create that picture of who was Luna before, uh, mm. before we meet her and before we see her in the show. And for that to be physical and visual and like 
you know, tactile was a really, just a really good way in, I thought. And you love that dress. <laughs> I love the dress, yes, don't we? Yeah, I can really see how that helped to build your character, Rebecca, how that backstory is, is, is really useful to see the dress before it's all roughed up and then to experience it in the play. That's, um, I can really see how that would help, help you as an actor, for sure. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about um, what it was like for both of you during uh, tech and into the performance. Um, how did your role shift there, Kirsty, and your relationship, Rebecca, um, with Kirsty when you got actually into performing? If we could cast our minds all the way back. Do you want me to go first, Rebecca, and then you can feed in? Okay, you go. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it was quite different first time and second time round. But when we first did the show, which was when we performed live at the Playhouse, um, I think when we got into tech, we so much was different, wasn't it? So much was changing and shifting. And we were lucky to have quite a long tech, which is really helpful because we got to know the space really well and we got to adapt to the things that were changing. Um, uh, I think my role did shift a lot. And it was interesting to think about uh, that happened quite quickly. So backstage, if you can imagine in a rehearsal room, whenever I'm necessary, if I'm watching and I can see that something has not been clear or if I know that I can help in some way, I'm overhearing loads of conversations from people where I go, oh, I could be helpful with that or that would be useful information for me to tell. Um, when I'm when I'm in a rehearsal room, that's so much easier because I can see everything and I can hear most things. Um, when we got into the tech and you're backstage, all of that like incidental knowledge that is coming to you kind of goes away. So you have to know all the questions to ask and you have to know all the uh, changes that have happened. Uh, and I've got to run around trying to find Rebecca. I mean, like, what's going on? Oh, she's on this scene over here. Oh no, she's on this <laughs> um, In the best way, you were just busy doing your job, Rebecca. So, um, but it was, yeah, it became like, it's a bit more of a, um, it's an ever moving thing, I think. But we got into such a good rhythm, didn't we, Rebecca, of like, I knew when you didn't need me and when you were totally independent backstage. But I also knew when you might need, I also knew when you might need a bit of support in terms of, um, well, just things like, is it my costume change right now? Because that there's nothing worse is there than doing a costume change at the wrong time, which has happened to many a person. Um, but just knowing that there is someone that you can trust and know that is going to go, no, I know it's the right time and now it's now. Um, but tech throws in so many more of those things and so many more of those changes, um, which you've just got to be prepared for and ready for. Um, how did you find tech, Rebecca? What do you think? Oh, the first time I did it last year, um, I, could, I, could, I couldn't know what scenes I'm in mean, because I had no papers up and... Um, um, what scenes I'm on and this time we had to pay up on scenes so I know what scenes I'm on so I can do that by myself like little Kirsty around. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, do you mean the running order that we had backstage is that what yeah, you mean? Yeah, order yeah. So there was more time for things the second time around because the show yeah. had been created so when we got into the show we could have like the order of the scenes listed up on the wall we could highlight them, couldn't we, Rebecca, of like, I'm in that one, I'm in that one, I'm in that one, I'm in that one. And then, because actually the thing that was the trickiest was uh, off stage, on stage, like you were incredible. <laughs> you knew what was coming when and you'd learn everything and you'd you'd uh, prepared and you'd rehearse for it. We never rehearse the off stage stuff. We never do that. We never rehearse like, how do we get from stage left to stage right? When is the right time to move? When is my cue to get in line? When do, when's my cue to come because the quarry is massive you've got to you've got to know so many different time cues and remember things um so it was so good the second time around that we we'd learned also about Rebecca we remembered the challenges didn't we we went oh last time I needed Kirsty a lot to help me with when to go on stage and then it's better to have a piece of paper that helps you than it is for me to be there all the time because then you can do it yourself you don't need to wait um so yeah, we learned yeah. loads of things. We got into quite a good rhythm, didn't we, Rebecca, with some of the scenes that we came on together with and, um, you know, checking we were both there. And I remember one, one 
when I was looking for you going, where's Rebecca? Where's Rebecca? And people were going, she's waiting for you. She's waiting for you. And I was like, but she's, where is she? She's not waiting for me. Why do people keep saying that? She's waiting for me, but I can't see her. And you, you were on already waiting behind the curtain. And I was in the off stage curtain waiting there going, and we were waiting for each other in different places. Do you remember? Yes, because Kyle said, Dawn, Dawn, um, said, Dawn, that's when I came on. Dawn's in, Dawn. Yeah. <laughs> They're such cross wires that day. But oh then, do you know what made me realise, though? It made me realise how, um, uh, how, what a good rhythm you guys had got into. Because that one, that one time that we did that run, um, that it didn't quite go to plan. I was like, oh, but that's so good because it means that you both, that you both know where each other are meant to be. You both know that yeah. you're supporting each other to be in the right place. It was just, it was a, a happy accident, I thought, when, we, when it happened. Yes, next time we work there. <laughs> oh, don't be silly. It wasn't your fault, Rebecca. <laughs> no, One no. of those things. I was totally, we were both doing the right thing in the wrong place or the right thing in the right place or the yeah. wrong thing in the wrong place. I don't even know. But um, <laughs> it was just a funny moment. It was a funny moment. I had to sneak on. Um, uh, so what we didn't manage to do last time is to tour, but we were going to go on this big tour, weren't we, Rebecca? We were. Um, and it was really sad that we didn't get to do it. So... So we're going to talk a little bit about touring, even though we didn't actually do it. We're going to talk a little bit about what we, what might have happened. Um, and do you know, Rebecca and Kirsty, did you have some plans set up for how you were going to sort of deal with the touring part? Yeah, so we, um, we had chatted about tour and we were in the process of sort of planning for what would happen on tour. Um, because we were going to do a run at Leeds Playhouse first and then go off on tour. Uh, and Rebecca's company is based in Huddersfield. So um, you were living at home, weren't you, Rebecca, for uh, rehearsals? So you, yeah, so we didn't have to consider accommodation, things like that, because you were all sorted. Um, but what we were sort of getting to the point where we were thinking about touring and being away from home for the rest of um, the run of the tour. Um, and we had chatted a bit. The, it's interesting to think about how much support would would have worked on tour because we were thinking we had a support worker that was going to come in and sort of do some relief shifts and things like that but we were in the middle of planning how much support we would need uh on stage and off stage and uh, at accommodation and not in accommodation so we had a few different plans and I think the biggest thing about that was responding to Rebecca and what was necessary we needed to know Rebecca first before we could go what would be useful what would not be useful uh there was one thing that I thought would have been useful on tour which was for me who had been in rehearsals with you and had worked with the directors and the creative team and knew what the show should look like for your characters and would be the best to show you at your best uh, to be watching the show on tour and noting and keeping up um just keeping up exactly how we'd rehearse and could see when things had gone slightly awry and could maybe maybe work out why things had gone um, awry and see how we could support and help with that. But then we got into the question of, oh, if I needed offstage watching in an audience and backstage to support with entrances and exits, uh, how do we manage that? So, yeah, there was lots of conversation about what would be the right amount of support. And I think because we didn't get on tour, we hadn't quite got there. But I think it's an interesting thing to think about. And that I guess that is tips and tricks for how you might want to do things if you did want to carry on the learning it is to be responsive all the time and to work out what is the best thing for that situation and go well actually if we do even though we haven't thought about it before if we do need to bring in another support worker to be with us all the time or to be with us some of the time um, that might have been what was the necessary thing um, or if we'd got to the point where Rebecca had her cue sheets and was totally independent backstage and other actors were there for entrances and exits and and I was really surplus backstage then just one person is is fine in the audience so it's probably an unhelpful answer but it was so dependent on what happened but I think that's how it works um I think I guess what I gleam from that is that um there is when it comes to access and inclusivity there is no one size fits all there just isn't 
every single person is an individual um and you you just can't and and i think you alluded to this earlier you know you can't just make a decision and stick to it it has to be a flexible um ever-changing beast and and i think maybe the advice to give to other companies is that they have to be aware that that it is ever changing and that you need to be able to, there needs to be room for maneuver and flexibility as you go from rehearsal into tech, into shows, into touring, and you can put plans in place, but you need to be reassessing them all the time. Would you say that's kind of fair? I think that's absolutely fair. And also the biggest thing about those plans being ever changing and flexible is that it's giving yourself enough time. So it's giving yourself enough time for those things to not work and for you to try something new mm-hmm. or giving yourself enough time to uh, for us to think about I mean me and Rebecca had a lot more to think about than some other actors just because the things like travel is a big thing that you have to think about Rebecca isn't it how you get somewhere who picks you up who drops you off um, and how that works so having enough time to plan in that kind of thing is again the most important thing you never know what's going to happen it has to change and it has to adapt but you need time for that to be a thing I always say three times by three how much time do you think you need times by three um I mean I'd say that for life in general yeah (laughs) it works yeah yeah so um Rebecca anything we're sort of coming towards the end of our our chat now so it's been lovely to have you. Is, is there anything else that you really enjoyed about being in Oliver or being with the cast or um, the things that you learned from the show? Or is there anything else you want to share with us about your experience? Um, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> <laughs> what, was, what was the best thing about Oliver Twist, Rebecca Hill? Thing. That's a good thing. Oh. Apart from working with Nancy, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing did one there. Uh, <laughs> oh. Stephen. Oh, and what about working with Stephen? You know, but, um, um, and then Nancy. I do uh. that Stephen, and then he gives this back, and then t- and he cuts me arms, ow, and then everyone's out, it's wicked all right. <laughs> yeah, so there was a beautiful moment with, between Bill Sykes, so Stephen who played Bill Sykes um, and Luna, Rebecca's character, um, where you just had this really, this moment that kind of summed up the whole of Luna's character and the whole of her experience, right? So she's being manipulated by this very nasty man and a whole gang, um, living a life that she doesn't really want to be living and we talked about that moment didn't we being super important to your character and actually that scene as a whole um was a really emotional moment for Rebecca uh and well for Luna but everyone kept thinking is Rebecca is Rebecca crying is is Rebecca okay (laughs) are you all right (laughs) and actually just acting just very good acting um but that's sorry go on Kirsty I was just saying, but that's a re- that's a nice. If we're talking about a best bit, if for you that sums up the whole journey that you had on Oliver, I think that that does make sense because I think uh, it was quite often that people did that people were surprised by how like into that character you got, especially in that moment. It's not a life experience that any of us have the it, Oliver Twist, but actually your connection emotionally to it, Rebecca, is very impressive. So I think that does sum up your experience. I got one more favourite one as well. Yeah. Working with the cast. Working with the whole cast. Yeah. On stage. Yeah. 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 Go on, what were you going to say? I just cut you off, sorry. Um, I said I love working with the actors on stage and off as well. Yeah, they were a good gang, weren't they? A really good team. Yeah. And the other thing was um, working with um, oh, Nagan, no, um, um, Nadine and Stephen. No, nothing was there. Was it Stephen there? No. Uh, In your gang Amy, scenes? Amy, the blonde hair one. Mm-hmm. So your, the gang scenes the gang you're talking scene. about. Yeah, mm-hmm. so when your your character is Luna. Um, yeah. yeah, you I had some really lovely scenes. Yeah. 
this is Fagan's gang that you're talking about, isn't it? Yeah, the, the biggest gang. Yeah. Did you enjoy doing all the pickpocketing scenes? Definitely, yes. <laughs> yeah. They were good, good fun to rehearse, weren't they, those ones? And working with Claire as well. Yeah, oh, working with I the whole think. gang. <laughs> Well, I had a pleasure um, working with you, Rebecca. I really enjoyed uh, your company during the show. And um, I guess this is it. We've come to the end of our chat. It's been really lovely to talk to you both and to hear more about um, the role of Creative Enabler and your experience, Rebecca, in, in Oliver Twist. It's been really fascinating to talk to you both. So thank you both very much for coming today. Um, I should say a big thank you to our interpreters, uh, Amy, Vicky and Dave. Thank you very much for being with us today. Um, what else should I say? I should thank the team backstage, our, our backstage, our tech team, and a massive thank you obviously to Ramps on the Moon and Leeds Playhouse for making this podcast possible. Um, and if you've enjoyed the podcast today, please go and have a look at the others. There's another four that you can look at. Um, there's one talking all about accessible design and uh, the design elements that went into the show, Oliver Twist. Um, there's one from the blind perspective where we're talking with the sound designer and our audio description consultant and Ben Wilson, who's in the show. And we're talking all about the sound design and audio description. There's another one with um, Stephen Collins, who played Bill Sykes in the show, and we look at the deaf perspective. So we look at the role of the BSL consultant and integrating BSL into the story. Um, and there's one more, oh, that, that I did with Amy and Bryony, which was all about the writing process. Um, and they're all going to be online for you to dip into. So please have a look at those. Um, share the love. Uh, tweet us. Hashtag us at the green room underscore UK. Yes, that's right. Um, and hopefully there'll be another opportunity for you to catch Oliver Twist online. Uh, watch this space and hopefully that will come up soon. So I think that's everything all I need to say is a massive thank you again to our guests today, Kirsty Pennycook and the marvellous Rebecca Hill. Thank you so much for being here. Um, bye everyone and we'll see you soon. Bye. And our guests, Rebecca Hill, Kirsty Pennycook, hosted by Claire Louise English, BSL Interpreters, Amy Cheskin, Vicky Ackroyd, David Witchley, the Green Room, a Ramps on the Moon takeover, looking at the making of Oliver Twist at Leeds Playhouse, a video podcast produced by Strive, a collective made up of the DH Ensemble and Hot Coals Productions, supported by Ramps on the Moon. You can find all the videos and more at www.strivecollective.org forward slash the hyphen green hyphen room, or alternatively visit the Ramps on the Moon lessons learned page at www.rampsonthemoon.co.uk forward slash lessons hyphen learned twitter at strive collective with no e hashtag the green room underscore uk celebrating best practice spotlighting unsung heroes inspiring action logos for strive hot coals productions and the dh ensemble ramps on the moon and supported using public funding from arts council england